It had to happen. 100 episodes. And then I finally realize what this has all been leading up to. Am I strong enough? Is anyone strong enough? Why did this have to happen now? I can't do this. I failed. I'm so sorry. All I can do is take the easy way out. And shit on MD guys! So, who didn't see this coming? If you didn't, you were born after 1989. Though old Taku have many a go-to punching bag when it comes to easy titles to mock, none are as infamous as N.D. Geist. Released back in 1992 stateside to pretty much universal disdain, that would have been the end for this weird little gore fest. But fate had other things in store. Enter John O'Donnell, the founder of Central Park Media. The guy had the weirdest boner for this show and continued to pump life into this veritable corpse of an anime nearly 10 years after it was originally made. Not only did he fund a restoration of the original cut, including adding nearly 6 minutes of additional footage, he funded a sequel. Because John O'Donnell hates you. No, not you in a specific sense, just you in a general sense. Everything the man did was either out of spite or selfish interest. Let me put it this way. Why do you think Media Blasters is called Media Blasters? That's right, the existence of an entire anime distribution company was predicated on giving the middle finger to this man. And honestly, hearing the stories surrounding him, I'm surprised he doesn't have a blonde mustache and a blue polo shirt. Eh? God damn it, it's a Duke Phillips reference! Nowhere was his delusional nature more apparent than on the special edition DVD of M.D. Geist. Oh yeah, he had a special edition of this DVD pressed. Not even Anime Today had this many features on their discs. Check it out. Storyboards, art galleries, interviews, commentaries. The fucker has a second disc just for bonus features. Who does that? Can you think of one other anime title that had that? I can literally hear all of your brains trying to work out that question, so I'll save you all the trouble. No, you can't. And all this at a time when DVDs were still being packaged in cardboard boxes, like this piece of shit. And the insanity doesn't stop there! Let's start from the top! From director Koichi Ohada, Genocyber, Cybernetics Guardian. Pro tip, copywriters, when you're thinking of blurbs to put on the back of your DVD box, try not to conjure up thoughts of child molestation. If this DVD were pressed today, then the back would read from Koichi Ohada, director of Blue Gender the Movie and Icky Tosin. Doesn't inspire a lot of confidence, does it? Neither does the front of the box, come to think of it. Check this quote out. Sophisticated and artful, New York Times. That quote has more ellipses than Squall's dialogue box. On a whim, I checked out where this quote came from, and guess what? It's from an article published on September 13th, 1996 about the nature of DVD sales and the curiosity of several anime topping the sales charts. The quote goes like this. A breed of sophisticated and artful, if often extremely violent and frankly sexual Japanese animation, anime has been popular for about six years in this country. That literally has nothing to do with anything. If you're going to take shit out of context, why not be creative about it? So, what is M.D. Geist? Well, have you seen The Road Warrior? Have you seen Fist of the North Star? Did you eat paint chips as a kid? Then congratulations, you've seen M.D. Geist. Describing it is sort of like describing the nature of anime at the time. Hysterically violent, convoluted to the point of ridiculousness, choppy animation, rampant misogyny, and enough cheesy guitar riffs to melt the face off any SWAT cat. <laughs> In other words, it's the anime this show was made for. 
Our anime starts on a distant world, upended by near-endless war. Giant mechs fly through the sky, tanks are blown apart, and soldiers try to do their best Red Brown impressions. Well, that's one way to stop someone from going full Garzy's wing. <laughs> Fucking Christ! Was that guy just stuffed with cotton candy? You know you're dealing with straight-up incompetence when the anime opens with an exposition text crawl in kanji that the dub doesn't translate. Why would I suddenly know how to read kanji if I selected the dub? I fucking hate it when this happens! And don't try and tell me that having subtitles here would mean another video track taking up space on the DVD. If they had the money and time to produce a DVD strictly for bonus material, they had the time and money for another video track. And even if they didn't, they at least had the resources to get some schlub working in accounting to belch out a canned voiceover explaining this to us. Not like this information is really necessary to know what's going on. It just pisses me off. The aftermath of the conflict leaves only a pile of bones and remains, and yet somehow this war still continues. What exactly are they fighting for again? I don't think there's anyone left alive out there. Maybe the ghosts will come out. What, StarCraft ghosts? Nah, that'll never come out. Well, these pilots might as well have said that they were only two weeks away from retirement because our... Uh, hero, Geist, Batmans his way up to their ship and takes it out all the while sporting a fashionable head wound that he plugs up with chewing gum. And now he's aboard a crashing satellite, seemingly years later because he's sporting Commandy at Earth's end hair. And the anime doesn't start with this scene because... And now we're smack dab in the middle of Fallout, as some random dude in power armor is being chased by the Lord Humongous' smegma crazies. Oh wait, it's not the Lord Humongous, it's Boss Fang! The guy chucks a spear that finally does the poor bastard in, making me realize just how fucking useless this power armor is. I mean, if all a guy has to do to pierce your power armor is play track and field, how good is it really? Well, good enough for guys to literally come out of nowhere to try and scavenge it. Seriously, where the hell did this guy come from? Not bad. And why is he being voiced by meth head Garfield? Boss Fang offers an ultimatum to Geist, saying that he can either join his gang or beat him in a fight. I wonder which he'll choose. These belong to you? They didn't even fucking try. You bastard! Was that a botched magic trick, or do the animators not know that you don't bleed from the mouth if you're stabbed in the head? Well, per accordance to the Law of the Wasteland, Boss Fang's squeeze becomes his, apparently, to do with what he pleases. If you want the suit, you can take it. If you need a place to stay, you can come with me for as long as you like. You want milkshakes? You'll get your milkshake. You want a camel at 3 a.m.? You'll get your camel at 3 a.m. You're lonely? My gash is right here. Okay, stop, 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 stop. I don't know how to go about saying this, so I'm just gonna lay it all out. All signs point to Geist being gay, and I know that's very easy to say considering his attire, but let's really examine all of this, shall we? Besides the fact that he dresses in Rob Halford couture, he rebuffs the advancements of women. He makes kissy faces at men he stabs, although this could be an animation error, and he rides bitch on someone's motorcycle. Come on, Bri Bri. Let's go wine tasting. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. All I'm saying is, if you're gonna invite him over, remember to turn off your smoke alarm. Steering us back on track, Desperate here is continuing to offer Geist anything he wants for seemingly nothing in return. First tell me everything you know, and then I'll consider your offer. Really? Sure then. I'll tell you anything you want to know. First question. What year is it? What year is it? What's that? Human speech? What's that? 
At their camp, Desperate fills in Geist about the two remaining armies still duking it out, with one side having all but won the war. Then, Desperate tries to pull her namesake, but we all know what happens. How does she respond? I won't let him get away. He's got something other men don't. He's strong enough to protect me from death itself. He can protect you even from death? Lady, I know Geist is supposed to be tough and everything, but I don't think he can kick death's ass. Not unless he was Teddy Roosevelt. We cut to the next day, and the two are scoping out a tank belonging to the regular army that is about to be hit. Desperate wants to join the offensive, but Geist ignores her pleas and instead decides to defend the regular army. I verify four powered machines on our flank. Three behind. It would appear the rear center is the command unit. Hi, obvious and intrusive digital zoom. I thought you were still seeing Ken Burns. Besides restoring the original print and adding scenes, John O'Donnell also had Central Park Media edit around the numerous animation mistakes present, hence the title Director's Cut. So what was that zoom supposed to mask? I verify four powered machines on our flight. Three behind. It would appear the rear center is the command unit. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. This may be the very first restoration project I've ever seen that makes it look worse. Furthermore, they're willing to ruin this albeit long and stilted shot by adding this unnecessary digital zoom, but this shot of Guy's head rattling around like a goddamn paint shaker? That's passable! So, with the help of Geist and the rest of the Smegma crazies, the regular army wins the day, but aren't willing to pay the price that Desperate wants. Forget it. We never asked you to fight in our battles or risk your lives if you didn't want to. We will pay you nothing. Spare me your pathetic nonsense! We saved your butts! You can't push me and Geist around! We could bury you anytime we want to! Shut up, you stupid hyena! You mean Vulture, right? Because that's what you'd call a scavenger like her. Unless you meant hyena because she laughs a lot. Which I hope she never does again. I'm a hyena. Yeah, I live off dead men. But who made me that way? You, the army boys! Your damn battles have killed almost everyone on the planet! <laughs> okay. If you think you got the moral high ground here, Desperate, then I'm officially changing your nickname to Delusional. Even this guy in the background here can't believe he's hearing this bullshit. Well, the colonel here lets the two fuck off, mainly because he knows who Geist is. An experimental soldier who, along with the rest of the so-called MDs, were supposed to be terminated after they were deemed too dangerous. He even explains Geist's background to his men, a scene that was missing from the original cut. When the war started, everyone feared the most dangerous soldiers. Perfectly trained for all forms of combat. But they were too good. Too dangerous. After one final mission, the army decided they had to terminate the project. But Colonel, we need his skills for our mission. Don't we? Yeah, Colonel, we need that unstable, unstoppable murder machine on our side! And guess what? After that entire spiel, the Colonel immediately recruits Geist. Well, thanks for wasting my time, guys! As the war turned against us, we prepared a final program. Our mission is to invade the Brain Palace and deactivate this program. Its name? The Death Force. But in order for us to invade the Brain Palace to stop the Death Force, we must forge our way through the Swamp of Sorrows, cross Mount Doom, and brave our way through the Valley of Negative Connotations, all while conquering fear. Fear is... Don't say it. Fear is... <sighs> the Mind Killer. Motherfucker! Ah! Oh, oh, Get your shoe shine box! Death Force was to be our final retaliation, a doomsday device. It reacts to all life forms attacking indiscriminately. Why would you ever build that? In an anime filled to the brim with bullshit, this has got to be the bullshittiest. You guys created a robotic force that was programmed to destroy every living thing, including yourselves, for deterrent purposes? Way to go, assholes! Seriously, who would ever build such a useless weapon? 
So, after Delusional swings and misses on trying to seduce Geist, the soldiers launch their attack on the... Brain Palace. A place the writer should have visited. And after some unfollowable, disjointed battle scenes, the men are reduced to Geist and the Colonel. Colonel, you and Mr. Geist have to get to the control room quickly. They're all dead again. Yeah, I know, man. It's a down economy. And Phoenix Downs are expensive. The Colonel reveals, after he activates a killer robot with a magic ring, just roll with it, that he knows who Geist is and leaves him there to fend off the bot. Why the hell did Geist go along with the Colonel if he knew that the guy was the one who sent him up into space in that satellite in the first place? I don't have a clue. So we have yet another disjointed fight scene with Geist and the killer robot, made only watchable by the fact that the bot transforms into Zoidberg. Zoidberg? Eh, well, like all things that stand in the way of Geist, it too falls, leaving the Colonel no choice but to laugh like a maniac before he kills him. I think my favorite part of that scene is that despite the Colonel knowing that he's going to be killed at the hands of Geist, he's still surprised by the fact that he's killed at the hands of Geist. I failed and now you're gonna kill me. <laughs> oh my god, what are you doing? I feel like a tilt sign should be lighting up right now. Out of nowhere, Desperate comes running in with the good news? Hey, Geist! You killed the Colonel! Everyone's dead up above! It looks awful! I mean, their eyes were gouged out and their tongues were ripped from their throats! It was just gruesome! But it seems that Geist has no intention of stopping the Death Force and actually activates it! Not even the Colonel's magically teleporting body could stop it! <laughs> the game's not over yet. It's just beginning. Yeah, I'd scream too if I heard a horrible line like that. So the Death Force is activated, and Guy seems all too thrilled that he has a chance to do some more killing. If you think this ending sucks, at least it was an ending. Not like the non-ending we got in the original cut. The game's not over yet. It's just beginning. Looks like somebody graduated from the Ego Rector School of Editing. Gabe, what the fuck was that? Hey, nobody messes with my alma mater. We begin part two of MD Geist with the newly activated Death Force munching on human remains. Yes, robots that feed on human flesh. This is what I like to call boomerang stupidity. A stupid plot moment or detail that doesn't occur to you until it flies right over your head and then smacks you right in the back of the dome. Really think about this. Robots that eat human flesh. Well, that infers that it has a digestive system, which means it has to poop. Can't eat something without pooping. I didn't go through third grade science class without learning that much. So our main antagonists in this anime are pooping robots. It seems there's one last survivor in this town, but he's spotted by a Death Force robot that looks like Black Manta for some reason. Luckily, the survivor is on the hood of Geist's car, somehow. Like, was Geist just waiting there, hidden under those layers of junk and rubble? What the fuck was he doing in his car? And why the fuck did Black Manta's leg fall off? <laughs> Thank you for your contribution to the regular army. And why does this guy sound like Alfred Ashford? I so want to enjoy this. <laughs> Ago. The army created those monsters!
monstrosities, and now both them and their enemies have been completely slaughtered. How much longer do we have to fight before it's all over? It doesn't matter. We're all done for anyway. <laughs> that has got to be the most ridiculously delivered bit of exposition I have ever heard. I didn't think it was possible to say something that forced, that forcefully. And speaking of forced, it seems that Delusional has been reduced to scavenging with a group of other survivors, but their party is hit hard by the Death Force. How horribly gross! About two seconds too early there, Kreskin. All seems lost, but then a veritable angel glides in and saves what's left of the scavengers, including Delusional. He picks them up and carries them to his refuge, the last surviving bastion of civilization, where everyone there reveres him as a literal god. And he also happens to be an MDS like Geist. Wait, weren't they all destroyed before the first MD Geist? Can I get a Rick Cone? Yes! Only one! You are quite a hero to the refugees, but in actuality, you're feared by even the army as one of their experimental warriors, an MDS. You must almost look like a god to them. No, not almost. In their eyes, it is certainly true. I have become a god incarnate. Yes, a god that looks like he's cosplaying as one of the members of the Blue Man group. I'm sure it can't be true, but if Geist is back on the ground, then... If he is back on the ground, so then what? I am the only MDS that is capable of using my powers, because only I have normal judgment. I'm the sane one, not he! I'm the sanest motherfucker you've ever seen! Right?! This is where the anime just fucking gives up and plays out like a clip show. All of a sudden, Krauser Smurf gets wind of Desperate's knowledge of Geist, extracts it from her somehow, then has his scientist butt boy send out a cyborg to kill Geist, who immediately finds him and looking like Geese Howard no less. Okay, the actor playing the cyborg... Oh, my leg! <laughs> yeah, he's pretty terrible. But he still winds up winning the day as he's picked up along with a knocked out Geist, only to be trussed up in shackles. What? Congratulations, Doctor. Are you going to destroy this monster as Lord Krauser ordered? Don't be ridiculous, you don't even know what you're talking about. Not like me, I've got a science on my head! The scientist butt boy decides to keep Geist because he's the perfect warrior, or so he says, and that decision immediately backfires on him. Meanwhile, Krauser Smurf has been betting delusional... because... We've captured the man you seem to know. It may be a clue as to how to get your memories back. Until then, I must fuck your brains... back in. Well, since Geist is looking like Weapon X, he might as well act the part and destroy the lab he's been kept in. Though I don't remember Logan ever being a cannibal, but there you go. Krauser manages to stop his rampage, but insists on moralizing to Geist instead of doing the deed. And then Desperate says something we wish all goody two-shoe heroes would take to heart sometimes. Krauser, kill him! He's not human! Wait, I'm supposed to kill him? I thought I was supposed to be an asshole. Getting the message, Krauser Smurf drops his ass a thousand feet in the air. But of course he isn't dead. Even Delirious knows that. He's a god of death and his mission is only to come and kill us all. And no one can stop him, not even you, Krauser. <laughs> okay, how many times will a character randomly fall head over heels into madness in this heap? Does no one have a grip on reality anymore? Because I don't. With Guy seemingly dealt with, Krauser Smurf lays out his plan to wipe out all of the Death Force with an atomizing bomb. But this broadcast reaches the ears of Geist, who's been helped by the cyborg for some reason. Hell, I don't even know if this is considered a face turn or a heel turn. Besides, I have a feeling that when you get enraged, you'll send all those pathetic creatures straight to death. But I do know that's an idiot turn. Straight to death, eh? I've seen Seagal films with less awkward threats. 
but it seems to spur Geist all the same, getting to the scene where Krauser Smurf has just set up us the bomb. The operation is complete. It will explode in 30 minutes. Good. <laughs> what happened? Did he forget how to speak there for a second? And why did he deliver that line like he was a petulant kid who didn't get his way? Good. I didn't even want that Snickers anyway. Everyone extend your wings. John, what's wrong? Okay, now he's just evolving into Shatner. John, what's wrong? It's like you're terribly wounded by an unknown assailant. The whole operation goes tits up as Geist is ruining not just Krauser Smurf shit, but the very concept of shit, forcing them to detonate the bomb with soldiers in the blast radius. While it does wipe out some of the death force, it still leaves Geist and more than enough of the flesh-eating bots untouched. And at this point, Krauser Smurf is less himself and more like Li Chao Lan. Oh no, it's burning. It's burning, my castle is burning. Have I lost? No, I couldn't have. I'm their god. I'll win. There is no way I can lose. I'll never give it up. Not to anyone. It all comes to a down and out brawl between the MDs, but Krauser Smurf is at the disadvantage when his people surround him, begging him for his help. And what happens next may be the funniest, most contrived death scene I have ever seen in my life. No, I couldn't have. Damn straight you couldn't have. What did that kid do? Jump into the air to get impaled on your rod? Giggity? Look, in order for the kid to get skewered like this, he would have had to either have been three feet taller or had purposefully jumped to get hit. The fact that the kid sounds bored by the fact that he's dead is just icing, though. The cake is Krauser Smurf's reaction. <laughs> dream of being able to ham it up like Krauser Smurf here, and he didn't waste his opportunity. Listen to that, he leaves no shred of himself behind. He threw everything he had into that screaming threat. This moment is so jaw-dropping, so amazing, that the anime literally ends with that statement. The fortress blows up, and the last shot is of his corpse impaled on a spike. The end. I... I am about to say something about M.D. Geist that I never thought I'd say in a million years. God damn, that was great! In fact, if this were in any other anime, I dare say that was a well-delivered, effective, manic episode. I mean, if there was any time for a guy to lose all semblance of sanity and resort to being a frothing-at-the-mouth lunatic, it would be this time. But as it is, the show is just unreal in terms of story, character, plot, acting, writing, and damn near everything. So the performance winds up less a harrowing descent into madness and more a raucous, hammy monologue that serves as the comedic cherry on top of this crap bucket. Make no mistake, MD Geist is terrible. Absolutely, without a doubt, terrible. But it's also one of the best good-bad anime I've ever seen. Hell, I'd go so far as to say that there are some things legitimately good about it, too. While the acting sucked, at least the actors exhibited a sound and tone that is sorely missed today. It's in the service of a script that is mind-numbingly dumb, but when it sounds right, it sounds right. It's never dull, it's not nearly as hateful as the director's other works, and the music is nostalgically cheesy. It's an anime whose reputation is sort of deserved, but also wholly exaggerated. It's not the worst anime ever made, far from it, it's just another schlock title. But an enjoyable one. Hmm. I wasn't sure what I was going to say here at the end of this review. I mean, what can you say? I made a hundred episodes of a pokey little internet review show that some people watch. And in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much of an accomplishment. And to celebrate it feels, well, egotistical. 
I mean, making anime abandoned is my job. This is what I do. It's not like I don't take pride in it, it's that no one else celebrates the hundredth time they've done something at work. You don't see lawyers celebrating their 100th case or salesmen celebrating their 100th sale. And then it occurred to me, sometimes they do. Sometimes after they put in their time and effort, they want to celebrate a milestone that they think they've achieved. And you know what? They have achieved it. They stuck with it long enough, whether out of love or obligation, to do their job a hundred times over, day in, day out. And they deserve to celebrate that, because once it's all over, it's on to number 101. And if they deserve that, why not me? Maybe I should stop and enjoy what I've done, with the people I've done it with, the people who supported me, and the people who were there along the way. So, here's to me. Here's to Mark. Here's to Gabe. Here's to David. Here's to George. Here's to my Patreon supporters who supported me not only with their views, but with their money as well. And here's to everyone who ever watched anything of mine whose names I tragically don't know. And finally, here's to the future. And future celebrations. <sighs> next month, back to work with Agent Ica. Till next time. Long live Benetopia! <laughs>